turn to 2 Corinthians, and let's start there. So, you did your homework? Remember what the homework was? The songs. The songs. And then Melissa's, Melissa's voice is gone. Alicia's sick. Roy and Bonnie's sick. Lindsay's sick. Brian's sick. Courtney, Mike is, Mike is not well today. So, Trish, who else? We taking votes? Um, I don't want voice search. Um, give me a couple seconds here. New tablet means new finger pointing and I'm not used to this one yet so well, let's see where would that be in uh, for those of you watching online I've been up most of the night was in bed all day yesterday we didn't get home late Friday night, and uh, we have this low pressure system swirling about our heads right now. And for those of us um, with particular issues, it doesn't make life very fun, I can tell you that. So sometimes when I feel this way, I just feel this way, but then on top of it, I got up out of bed this morning and didn't want to get out of bed this morning. So, for where I'd rather be, I would rather be back in bed. So, all right, what was the homework? Remind me. The lyrics to songs. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, uh, verse 13, for such are false apostles. By the way, had a tremendous week this week. I'm not kidding you. Um, for those of you that watched, um, it was, and, and for those that didn't, it was just a, 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 I don't think the camera could really convey uh, what God was doing this week because when I would get done, I would just go back and shut everything off, but they would have probably 20 minutes worth of altar service at the end of each service this week. Uh, after, and at that, that is just after I, my part got done. And um, so I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, but that's, that probably has a lot to do with uh, why I feel the way I do today. So the, um, the text is, verse 13, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, I have a theory that I've held on to for several years. It kind of goes like this. Back in the formative days of our country, um, the American child was influenced by three primary sources. Number one, his parents. Number two, his or her pastor or the local church. Number three, the schoolhouse. For years in this nation, and I mean for 150, 200 years, um, those influences in that child agreed as to how that child was to be raised. Because the family was in, was the primary source. They were being influenced by the local church, by the Bible. And then both of those were an influence over the local school district. Constitution required that the local school district be controlled locally. But somebody figured out years ago that the way to get around that is to throw in a bunch of federal money 
and then get the schools hooked on that, once the schools got hooked on that federal money, then that, there, there comes the federal influence. And um, you have a bunch of liberals in Washington, D.C. that think they know better how to raise children than most people do. And uh, so once the federal money got involved, then came the federal influence. And the federal influence says we need to teach your children that they came from monkeys, that they evolved, and uh, we need to throw God out of everything. And so there goes the local influence in the schools. So while all three of those agreed as to how a child was to be raised, then that child pretty much was going to be raised a certain way. Once there came a schism in that through federal control of the local school districts, plus along the same time you had um, a debate over where the Bible was in our churches, so then it started going south there, and then on top of it, you had um, influence over the child outside of all three. You had influence over a child's mind by way of a little device called a transistor radio. Because at one time, a radio was something that was in the living room and it was a piece of furniture because the tubes that controlled that radio were like this big and nobody carried one around in a wagon okay, to listen to. But then the transistor came in, which took the tubes out of the TV and the radio and took the tubes out of it so that a child could have a radio in their room and they could listen to music that the mom and daddy wouldn't have agreed with. Remember back in those days? See, I'm just looking at it from the 70s onward, okay? When I look back before my lifetime, I can see what happened. A child started listening to things, then he started watching things in his room that his mom and dad didn't know about. That's my generation, okay? Because I did. Shh, Melissa. Don't tell mom about mine, and I won't tell her about yours, all right? Huh? No, not a word. But anyway, see, why didn't we stick up for each other back in the day? It's like we love each other now, so anyway. But at some point, all of that started feeding into a child's head, so then you had the rebellion of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, 90s, and now we're in the 21st century, and now we cannot control children. We have zero control over most children in this nation. And they're not getting, they're not getting guidance from home, and they're not getting guidance, proper guidance from the school district, and they're not getting proper guidance from the church house. Church house has gone the way that the school and the home has gone. Does that make sense to everybody? So, and what... I'll tell you where my mind is. My mind is, trying, still trying to find my notes for Sunday school, but my mind is, we were talking last Sunday about Satan being the Lord of corruption. And so what has he done to a child's life? Right now, a child, a child, knows as much about adultery fornication as most adults did a hundred years ago or more because of the corruption that has invaded the schoolhouse, the church house, um, and the home. All right? So now, your turn so, while I look for my notes. Um, who has lyrics to songs? Well, you have to come up here because... Yeah, or just read out loud, and then I'll give the songs that were an influence. We, we grew up in the 70s and then into the 80s. Um, songs back then that we can see had an influence. Yeah. I never even heard of that one. 
you know what? That sounds like uh, Rolling Stones, I'm going to say late 60s. Um, there was a song, Sympathy for the Devil. Okay, and we're talking the late 60s that the Stones came out with this song and it was basically the, uh, the devil introducing himself to everybody and you didn't know his name. Of course, if you didn't figure it out by the beginning of the song, then wasn't much hope for you. Uh, who else has got one? Yes, sir. I don't have anything specific. Yeah. Um, let me give you a little background. Uh, the, the verse that we, were, that we left off with, la I can't even pull up my PowerPoint. It's just the day that it is. Um, there, there's, um, be not deceived. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. And uh, a couple things that he mentioned was the music industry. He mentioned uh, the Collins family. Who remembers Dark Shadows from the 60s? I used to love that show. I would wake up from a nap to go watch that show. And, uh, but it dealt with the Collins family, and there is a, an, a level of truth about that TV show was that the Collins family, along with several of the families, they just were noted for not being the best people in the whole world. Um, but the infiltration that took place in mainstream music, then into the area of, of what they call Christian music, we should not be deceived that evil communications have we're not we're not talking about will we're talking about evil communications have corrupted the when it says good manners that doesn't just mean don't burn up the table and put the salad fork next to the dinner fork good mannerisms good lifestyles evil communications have corrupted every bit of this in just in i was born in 66 just in my lifetime i have seen the corruption grow worse and worse and worse. Now, I'm not the biggest, um, what was the guy's name you mentioned? John Todd. John Todd. I'm not the biggest John Todd fan, okay, because that guy had shady character, okay. Maybe it was just the baggage from where he came from, I get it, but I don't need his testimony to tell me what has happened? I can look back at American history in the past, in my lifetime, I can look back at American history and see that these are the things that did take place and it's not getting any better. Who's got, you're going to have to really help me out. Go ahead. Since you did your homework, go ahead. Um, Motley, Crue. I used to think it was Motley Crue. And you grew up in church. I was going to say your mom and dad's house, but anyway, church will work. Let me say this before you say the lyrics, okay? The lyrics were the poison. The beat was the injection system. Okay, the beat is what made us drink or accept the poison or at least take it in however because without that beat, okay, the lyrics would never have gone where they went to, okay. They would have bounced off the outside and that's where they would have stayed. But it was the beat and people didn't understand and people to this day still don't understand this that the delivery system was just as harmful as what was in it, okay? And I mentioned this during this week. You could go back and look at Conway Twitty from the 60s and 70s, and you're going to get the same thing because he used a different delivery system, but, and it, it was a, geared toward a different people, but the issue was the same. He was driving home certain things that should have never been discussed at least openly should have never been talked about should have never been promoted but he did it Jerry Lee did it Elvis did it and then I mean I'm mentioning names you're going Elvis who listens to Elvis well we all did back in the day and that was the beginning of the sorrows of the 21st century we live in now go ahead 
Give us a few licks of Motley Crue, if you don't mind. Wild Side. Good grief. Now, Motley Crue, okay, 80s, okay? That is already, how can I say this? That's already dealing with um, the situation as it was in the 80s. Okay, it's already, it's already talking about what had already been established, okay, because by the 80s, we're talking about Twisted Sister, we're talking about Motley Crue, we're talking about Dio, we're talking about groups that grew up in the 80s, or rose up in the 80s, and they're already expressing an ideology that was well, well entrenched by the time the 80s came around. When you get into, back into the 70s and into the 60s, going back into the 50s, the lyrics had to be veiled, but those who peered under the veil knew what the lyrics meant. Huh? Which speak, yeah. But, you're, yeah, and you're dealing with lyrics that, things that should have never, things that were talked about in honky-tonks and bars and pubs and taverns all throughout the country. You're dealing with bar music, you're dealing with bar lyrics, you're dealing with themes that people talked about in bars, but they didn't talk about at home, they didn't talk about it in church. But now these things are being injected into the minds of young people. Let me hear from an older sort. Oh yeah, just the song Satisfaction. Just that song, just the, just the name of it, and you get it, okay? And everybody got it back then, and while there was, there was, a, there was a radio station in St. Louis, KHTR. Back in the 80s, they were hit radio, and they were playing all the pop songs that everybody listened to. But back in the 50s, KHTR was noted for, they made a video, actually a film, where they were busting rock and roll records and they said, KHDR will never play this music ever, 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 ever. Until the money dried up. Then they started playing it. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Surely Mick Jagger has got to feel way worse than me. <sighs> he looks way worse than me. Yeah. And the first two standards are, please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. I've been around a long, long year, sold many a man's soul to waste. And I was around when Jesus Christ had his moment of doubt and pain. Stop right there, because I know the rest of it. Okay? <laughs> okay? But I, I get it. I get it. The Stones, the Beatles, you had groups coming in. You had Elvis. You had even Fats Domino. What was, he, what was his best song? Blueberry Hill. I'm not going to tell you the lyrics. I would be embarrassed to talk about that in Sunday school. My point is this, and then I'm going to go to retire to my office. I'm going to come out. God gave me a really good message last night, but it... I don't even feel like preaching it, but it's needed. Um, here we are. We're talking about the devil during Sunday school, and I've got them all over me this morning. Um... God raised us up during this generation to live at this time. We're not going back to the days of Leave it to Beaver or before that. But here's what I want to tell you. We're going into better days. If I didn't believe that, I would not stand out here today. I would go home. Okay? If I didn't believe that the days that were ahead of us were better than the days that are behind us or the days that are direct, imminently in front of us. Um, Christ had to go through Gethsemane and go through Calvary to get to where he is now, which is at the right hand of the Father, which is where I would rather be today. And, um, but if I didn't believe that the days that were ahead of us, I hear older people talk about the revivals of the old days, I did not live in those days. I did not see those days. 
And so if I felt like that all the best stuff was in a time that I did not even live, then there wouldn't be much reason for me to be out here to tell you about the hope that we have as Bible-believing Christians. But we have it. And so um, the devil is good at corruption, but think of what corruption smells like. Okay? Versus the sweet savor that Christ gives to each one of us. The reason why the world doesn't uh, think of it like this. Um, certain animals are drawn to the smell of corruption. Okay? Without getting too graphic. They're drawn to that because that's their flavor. And how we smell before Christ, we have that sweet aroma they want nothing to do with it, okay? But from our standpoint, we've had as much of the corruption as we want, and we want nothing more to do with it, and so the, the smell of that corruption does not draw us the way it used to, and we want something far better with our lives. This is why lost people stay lost, and they will always stay lost, is that they love that corruption. And the worst that it gets, all you have to do is watch hyenas tear into the corrupted body of some elephant that's been there a week already. And you get the idea. If they love that, they don't want anything to do with the sweet aroma of Jesus Christ. Amen? I do. I want more of that than I do anything else this stage in my life. Can I hear God's people say amen? My apologies for not being more scriptural, but we'll see what God does with the rest of the service, all right?